Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And today we are not in DCS World, we're actually outside of DCS World to talk about DCS World multiplayer servers and a fantastic service that we can see here on the screen, Fox3 Managed Solutions. And we're here with the two owners and operators of Fox3 to talk about their service and what it can do for you in the future. I absolutely swear by these guys and I don't think I'll ever have a multiplayer server in any other place because it's a really fantastic service. So why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Let's start with Luck. Hey, this is Luck at Fox3. And um, like you all, I'm very much a DCS enthusiast and I'm involved as much as possible and I fly as much as possible. But um, with the advent of Fox3, I've been flying a little bit less, but uh, it, we love what we're doing. And this is almost like, um, it's almost like non-work for me. It's almost like a game. Anyway, go ahead, Scott. Yep. Um, I'm Crunch, otherwise known as Scott, to Joe and I, and um, I'm right in the same boat as him. We started this thing out of the uh, the love of the community, for one, and two, we just wanted to uh, to offer a service for people that we'll talk about a little bit more, we'll elaborate, but we wanted to give out a service that someone could just dump a mission in and go. And because um, we, we this was basically born from a um, a group that that I started that that Luck is actually part of, um, an integral part of, and um, he just came to me one day and said, "Let's let's do something like this." And we threw it together, and we're offering a product that uh, that is unmatched, and there's just literally no competition that uh, that could hold a candle to what we do. So. Yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, for myself, when, you know, trying to host a mission with, you know, 45 to 50 players at a time, you know, it's a lot like herding cats trying to get a mission briefing done and all of that. And just having, being able to just throw a mission in there and then turn it on and, and go is a really huge um, boost to my ability to create missions and then go and have fun with the missions rather than having to fiddle with servers and things of that nature. But, uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the new features that you guys have uh, brought into um, Fox 3 and uh, talk about some of the new pricing that you've come out with here starting in 2022. So I'm going to bring the web page over to the order your server web page and we'll take a look at the different tiers here. So uh, why don't you guys go ahead and walk me through the different tiers that you can order through your service and what they kind of mean for the end user. Sure. So, um, so, so we have the we added the micro tier, which is uh, up to ten pilots, and it turns out that it seems like most of our customers are probably in this bucket. These are these are individuals that that want a server that really don't want to mess around with hosting it and dealing with the ports and all that good stuff. And and so there's a lot of what I call boutique smaller groups that do the micro tier, and uh, you know it, it suffices for them. It gives them everything they want. Uh, turnkey without a lot of headache and it's it's you know it's price right for them that's that's a good uh, a good we, we did this because our, our tier a used to be kind of a barrier for people that were in the smaller groups and then tier a uh, is up to uh, 40 pilots now but this is the reason I put uh, you know kind of up to 40 pilots is it really depends mostly on the mission uh, the missions that people are running a lot of people are running like liberation missions uh, or heavily scripted missions that have a lot of objects in them. Those things tend to take a little more memory and uh, require a little more horsepower. So that that 40 is, you know, an arbitrary number. It's it's um, dependent upon the missions that are running, and et cetera. But uh, tier A is good for, you know, relatively medium-sized groups. You know, I think uh, Spud Spud's uh, server is actually running on a tier A and it, it runs fine for 45 to 50 users. Uh, whenever he runs a mission so then our tier b is for the bigger uh servers these these are going to be people that have up to 80 pilots or maybe they're running 50 pilots but they're running a, a super massive liberation mission that's uh, that tears up the cpu and the memory so that's why we have that tier um we have a few people on this tier it's um you know like i said it's it's for the bigger groups and then uh, further down, we have our events server. And our events server is basically a one-time single-use server. If someone has a special event they want to run, like a like a tournament or something, maybe one group versus another, um, they can set up a, uh, one of these servers and they could use it for a few days or, or a week uh, or just one time. 
and uh, they're paid they pay just the one price and uh, again this one could be done in the US it could be done in Europe or it could be done somewhere in Southeast Asia and so uh, we cover the world that way and then lastly we have our cu our uh, custom skins delivery cloud so basically uh, if you're a group suppose you're like the Motor City Pit Vipers uh, we had our own custom skins and um, you know you got a lot of people coming in and out maybe you got 40 people that need the skin this is a good way to deliver the skin to everybody and have it plop right into the directory without trying to teach people to, where to copy these files to because a lot of people have a hard time with it and so it kind of takes the it takes the challenges um, of m managing skins out of the picture uh, for a lot of people that are maybe a little less technical yeah, and one thing that I do want to em emphasize for anyone who's looking at these different tiers and deciding which one to get, uh, from my experience, you know, extensive exper experience with making missions in DCS World and then running them with large groups of people, DCS World is a very difficult thing to benchmark and see what kind of performance you're going to get from a specific mission. This is because in simulators, in most simulators, you can place so many objects on the map you could have a supercomputer, and if you place enough objects on the map, you're just going to crash the whole system. So, like uh, you know, Luck was saying, if you're running a huge liberation mission with hundreds and hundreds of units all fighting in a gigantic ground battle, you know, you're only maybe going to be able to get ten people on a tier B. But you know, if you're trying to just do a regular mission, you know, you're you're very good at uh, you know keeping missions streamlined while also making it fun and interesting for the pe folks who are flying. You can take a tier A server just like I have and get 50 people on there and have a great time and have a really fun action-packed time as well. And um, so that's just something that I think is uh, really wanted to get across for you guys as well, uh, just because. It is so hard to come up with a solid benchmark in DCS, and that's why Luck has the you know squiggly line for about on these tiers, so up to about 80 pilots, up to about 40 pilots, whereas you can squeeze a little bit more or have to pull back a little bit more depending on the mission you're trying to run. Does that make sense, guys? Absolutely, and I think there's. Uh, it's important to mention that if somebody's running into a uh, an issue where they they think that or they're anticipating a bigger uh, a bigger show up or a um, you know a bigger event just ends up showing up because I've had that happen and um, it's just a matter of getting a hold of us. Some of us um, we're we're within minutes away of of usually answering. That's not a perfect guarantee, but we're usually a few minutes away from from answering your questions and having the ability to uh, to allocate some hardware or, or make some changes and and talk about things. So that's that's something to note. Gotcha. Okay, so let's go ahead and move in and talk about a couple new features that you guys have with coming up here in 2022 and are already rolled out to some of your existing clients. And that is going to be the ability to add mods to your DCS World server that is hosted through Fox 3 to allow your group to run things like, say, High Digit SAMs, Civil Aircraft Mod, Military Aircraft Mod, the C-130 Mod, and anything that's gonna add a new object to DCS World is gonna need to be also on that server. And so now you guys have an awesome and very seamless way to just add those right to the servers. Yeah, so um, currently, you, you know, we, we provide this cloud access for dropping missions into the, the, the server to run the mission. So what we've added was uh, in that same directory where your missions are, we've added a mods directory and um, we could also put scripts in there too. Um, so if you have a script that needs to go in there or mod, you can install it in there and then it'll be, it'll be applied to the save games folder for DCS server, which will basically add it to the server. Now, after you do that, after you say you add a script or a mod, you need to, you need to restart your DCS server. And uh, we've created a couple of commands for, for doing just that, uh, which is what we call the reboot me command. And, um, you know, in that same interface where you drop your missions, you just create a text file called reboot.me. And um, once it gets received, you'll receive an email saying we received it and the server reboots. And it's usually within five minutes because those uh, servers are checked. The poll checks every five minutes. Um, and then uh, same goes for if you're running Liberation and you finished your mission and you want to get the state file, state.json file, 
uh, you can create a file called get state and it'll do the same thing it'll put the state file into that folder for you so you don't have to call us and say hey can you pull out the state file usually those state files end up in some wild temp directory under app data but uh, that this will make it easier and then lastly some people are doing a lot of custom scripting and uh, in their missions and there's some errors sometimes if they want to see what's going on they can actually request the logs and to do that just say get that log and put it in a missions folder and then uh, the lo DCS log will appear there and within five minutes and then once again you can email, email confirmation Fantastic. yeah that email confirmation I think is going to help a lot of people out because it's going to allow people to know that things have been received and then the, the process is underway but to show you guys here looking at the actual um, next cloud interface that i use to add missions to the server and then add or take away mods things like that our mods folder here really is just to kind of a digital over the cloud um representation of the mods folder that you would find in the saved games folder of any dcs world server <laughs> or client install so we open up the mods folder and we just plop in what we need so high digit sand civil aircraft mod uh, things of that nature, you know, services this is where, you know, lot ATC would reside inside there and tech where tack view would reside just like you would find on your client side or on a server that you maybe admin yourselves. You can see it's exactly the same and it's pretty easy to wrap your head around. Also, another really fantastic thing that comes with the Fox 3 servers is the ability to just grab the tack views right off of the server um, when your mission has completed. So as we all know, when a mission ends in um, a DCS world server, if TAC view is associated with that server, it's going to cut off the recording of that TAC view and actually create the TAC view file. And the TAC view file, just like you would find by default in your documents folder on your client side or on a server you admin yourselves, is represented right here through the cloud. We just click on it and we can see here is the TAC view file that was created from uh, yesterday's Sunday mission with the uh, Spuds Buds group. So it's all right here, just like you would kind of see in your normal computer as you're adminning your own server on your client side. It's just in a very simple, very streamlined interface here in Nextcloud through the cloud. Anything you want to add to that, uh, Luck or, or a Crunch? No, I think you covered it. Yeah, I think you're uh, you're pretty good. I mean, I think the only thing that I could add is um, the ease, and I, I think I've already kind of covered it. But the ease is of which this these processes are. It's a matter of of dropping files and going. There's nothing else to it. There's no need to go into a back end. There's no need for. Um, for, for hardware configuration or open ports or closing ports or port for any of that stuff. This is all done by us. We want to make it easy for our customers and it's this is the process that we do and it makes it simple. So. Yeah, and if I, could, if I could add to that, so there's a couple of advanced things too and some of you out there would know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the missions. Um, inside the scripting folder, there's mission scripting Lua. Uh, that's set up for persistence by default. And um, the other thing that we always provide is lot ATC, and we also provide um, tack view on every machine. So the uh, lot ATC is more of a, a little bit more of a pig on a, on a server, and so on the micro tiers it's not included. But everything else has it, and um, if you want to take advantage of it, you certainly can because that the ports are there. Everything's everything's ready to roll. All you have to do is um, log in with the right port, and you're ready to roll. So at this point, guys, now that we've taken a look at all the new features, look at all the new pricing and whatnot for Fox 3 in 2022, let's take a look at how easy it is to actually set up the server and then put a mission on the server and then finally hop into the server and start flying around. It's pretty darn easy. All we got to do is have our next cloud, uh, cloud interface open, find a mission that we want. Let's go ahead and put in Dogfight Practice head-on version 3. Dot miz that we've got here we'll just plop this into the server files or sorry into the next cloud right here uh, dogfight practice head on v3.miz and then we will go to our login on the eagle dynamics website we, all we need to do is click on my servers click on the server here wait a second while everything loads up we'll add the mission from our mission files 
There is Dogfight Practice head-on version 3.miz right here at the bottom. Click on it, add, and be, at this point you just got to be a little bit patient. Sometimes it takes a little bit for things to load up and refresh and all of that. Then all we got to do now is hit run. Everything is loading up. This is the actual DCS World software loading the mission into the DCS dedicated server that's running at Fox 3 uh, Managed Solutions. Loading. There it goes. Again, sometimes you just got to be a little bit patient. We don't want to rush this process or start pressing buttons and things like that because we don't want to interrupt the server as, as it's loading the mission. It doesn't give you all that much in terms of a representation of like a loading bar or anything like that. So just give it a few minutes and you'll be good to go. We can, of course, change server settings and whatnot, just like we can with all of the normal uh, way that you would host a DCS world server through the dedicated server software. And at this point, we can actually find the server in DCS World Multiplayer. And let's search for Spud, and it should populate here. There it is, so the Spud Knocker server, fox3ms.com, serial number 249, and we'll go ahead and join. I've got our password here, put in the server software. We'll make sure we have that in there. We can see that is the IP address for the server. And that matches everything you're seeing in the Eagle Dynamics interface. There goes the auto connect for SRS. So we'll minimize that. And since we've already got my Russian stick plugged in from my last mission that we flew, we'll just hop into a JF-17 Thunder. Briefing fly, just like you guys of course know how to do. We are now in the mission itself, of course the assets are loading in. I better go ahead and put on my track IR hat. We'll recenter everything, and then we'll just do an alt tab over to the server, resume. And we're now flying in a Fox 3 Managed Solutions server that easily and that quickly. This truly, truly is a game changer for me as a mission maker and event hosting person and mission hosting, uh, you know, person and uh, content creator, because this really just makes it so much easier. Do you guys have any closing remarks or anything you'd like to talk about? Got you. Yeah, I, I just I want to just say that, that we're doing this for the community. We have a love of it, and um, you know we have our own group that that, that we operate with, and um, we have a lot of affiliates that we deal with and that we work with, we fly with. We're I, I just find it more and more um, intermingled, and uh, and we just like that cohesion. We're we're here for you. If you have any questions, it's it's simple, direct message. Do it on the um, on the Discord somehow some way get a message to us email we're going to answer it and you're going to get the service that you need and deserve yeah guys this is truly a game changer for dcs world multiplayer due to the massively uh, beefy servers on their back end and the way they put everything together the way they automate everything as well as some credit goes to equal dynamics as well for you know improving the net code incrementally over time dcs world multiplayer is in a place thanks to eagle dynamics and fox 3 that it has never been before and it is a ton of fun so we'll see you guys in the next one and thanks for uh taking a look and showing me this in depth guys uh i really appreciate it absolutely we'll see you soon awesome